four. Okay, this is part four of chapter 22 in God's book, Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord, dictated to me. I am the righteous servant, Moshe. And he dictated this to me. Just as the Torah was dictated to Moses, as the Orthodox Jewish uh, Jews of Judaism believe. And I, I'm, I'm sure the primary reasons for that is Moses couldn't have known the first five books of the Bible. He was raised a prince in, uh, in Egypt. He wouldn't have known anything he was writing about. Genesis, Deuteronomy, Numbers, uh, etc., and uh, uh, that's true of the whole Hebrew Bible. All of the prophets wrote their books. He had he dictated to each prophet. And there's some 20 books. Uh, that prophet's book. The entirety of the Hebrew Bible is the Word of God. And this is the Word of God. Divinely received. It's Scripture. It's what you're listening to. This came from God. I can't, just like Moses, I can't possibly have this knowledge. There's no rabbi today or that has ever lived or sage that has the knowledge that I'm teaching from this book on these videos. I'm the only teacher he recognizes. When Moshe acts here, he has a reckoning with and dismisses all the shepherds, all the rabbis. They're dismissed before him. And there's videos on it that, that explain that better, but and then he appoints his servant David, a shepherd. That's the anointed one of chapter 11. It's the only teacher he recognizes. And that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching this new scripture. Which, when the witnesses, and there will eventually be witnesses of me saying, who can believe what we have heard? It's going to come through these videos and learning this knowledge, and it's going to make them want to be righteous if they, when they come to believe in me. A many, and then a multitude. That becomes a multitude. I don't know, the, I don't know what a many, I don't know how many that means. We'll see. Okay, this is picking up from part three of chapter 22. This would be part four. Then, to make him suitable for his promises, God punishes, chastises, maltreats, crushes and bruises him in a fire refinement. To make this Gentile's face, just as with uh, Ezekiel, as hard as the Jewish people. Just toughen you up. To, to not get emotional when people deny who you are and call you ugly names, which they do in my comments. Shun and despise. And hell of no account. His forehead is brazen in his ears. His forehead like Adam had harder than flint. So that he will not fear the Jewish people or be, be dismayed by them. Oh, he's changed my emotions and uh, he can do it in his power. I, I don't know why you got to beat it out of me. But that's, <laughs> physically and emotionally, that's a beat down. Yo, he's relentless. I'm not talking about putting a pain on you or making you emotionally upset about something for a few minutes or a few hours or eight hours. No, I'm talking about days, weeks, and months sometimes. And I'm still in it. I've suffered with it all night long and all today. And uh, I can, you know, I don't just hear his words. You can feel God's presence. There's a hit or he makes me think that or feel that. <laughs> yeah, his presence is heavy. He can make it as heavy as he wants. He can pin me, pin me down in a chair or in my bed to where I can't even move. You know, it's something you got to, it takes some getting used to. It's an invisible force. It's like watching some horror show <laughs> on YouTube or the TV. Slam you to the ground, an invisible force. For apparently no reason. It's not like I was arguing with him or doing anything. 
Oh, he slammed me down close to 10 times now. Now, that is over 16 years, and it really didn't start until about three years ago. But, well, it's maltreatment as much as anything. Uh, you can't imagine how much it hurts your feelings that God's doing this to you. I mean, you can think about it and go, yeah, I can see where that would be very upsetting. <laughs> the right, but again, it's to change my entire emotional package. You know, uh, Moses had a furious spirit. Ezekiel had a furious spitter in bitterness. And I'm not going to get into all that, but uh, you can find it on some of the other videos. Again, I'm focusing on Jesus doesn't fit these verses. The righteous servant, <coughs> excuse me, servant bearing up to this final refinement is bearing the unrighteousness of the Jewish people to be recognized as a prophet of God that in and of itself will draw the Jewish people back to Judaism, recounsel the families one to the other, and make the many righteous, made whole, and healed. Christian ideology is that the crucifixion of Jesus, by the crucifixion of Jesus, the sins of those who believe in him, accept him as their Lord and Savior, and believe in the resurrection, are forgiven of all sins, and they receive eternal life in heaven. This verse would have to be interpreted that it was not the crucifixion, but the Roman scourging beforehand. There's nothing about crucifixion, murder, or death in Isaiah 53, except exposed to death. I've been exposed to death four times. Jesus wasn't exposed to death. That means you almost died, but you didn't. No, Jesus died. That's not an exposure. That's the real deal. There is no... Okay, I just covered that. Verse 6. From the JPS 1985. We all want to stray like sheep, each going his own way. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. Remember, I offered myself for guilt in Isaiah 53, 10, after being crushed with the disease. And, um, but again, it's to remove their guilt is a better way to read that, by making them righteous. They feel guilt because they don't follow God's laws. Midrash form, and the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. This would happen. <laughs> this would happen in the day of the Lord when God requires a man to be his visible representation and speak and write his words. As Moses did. In the day of the Lord, which is today, it's here. It actually began in 1948. And will continue as far as the length of time until my death, which is at his discretion. I was supposed I was given a month to live with stage four lung cancer, untreatable. I hadn't seen a doctor since. Twenty two years ago, when the planes hit New York, God crushed me with stage four. Lung cancer and colon cancer before that, which, anyway, I, I've talked about it too much. But I am the full fulfillment of 5310. And Jesus can't have anything to do with it. He was never crushed by God with disease, never offered himself for guilt, did not receive long life, did not see his children, he didn't have any. He can't fit any of it. And he's not heading to the verse yet here. There's only one, 12. It says he was counted among the sinners. Well, I'm counted among the sinners. I've, I've sinned plenty of times in my life. I'm not allowed to anymore. Not for the last 16 years. Yeah, no lies have crossed my mind. In the day of the Lord, a Gentile. It would be me. Is tested by God, test of devotion. And upon passing the test, which I did, 
that's offering yourself for the gift. Will he or will he not? Because what, what I had to do was I had to agree to the final refinement in a covenant with God. Upon passing the test, the man becomes the righteous servant, Moshiach, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses. Four righteous men, only one description. I accepted God's offer of possibly having long life, possibly. I didn't even know he would for sure do it. <laughs> After being crushed with disease and return of his offering of himself for guilt, a covenant between the God of Israel and a Gentile. The guilt of the witnesses visited upon him. The guilt they had for sinning and emotion. And I've explained that. The Gentile who returns as a Gentile, oh, the Gentile Elijah, he was a Gentile, who returns as a Gentile in the day of the Lord, God comes from Adam, symbolizing Assam, Christianity, and Gentile lands. In the Talmud, and of the peoples, the Jewish people, none are with him. Adam is no longer uh, no longer exists uh, in the day of the Lord and today would be within Jordan God returns coming from a Christian country with a Gentile his righteous servant Moshe at least in the beginning I, th I think he's going to have me convert to Orthodox Judaism in Jerusalem we actually started a conversion class here in Houston uh I think he just, well, anyway, two weeks into it, my, or three, my father had a heart attack and I had to stop attending. I could have gone back, but, I mean, he got, he was home in a week after a, tri a quadruple bypass. And, um, but God said, no, we're, we're done with that synagogue. It's the largest conservative synagogue, uh, one of, in the nation. And I went to all the high holidays. And I attended uh, several uh, uh, Shabbat, uh, well, a Shabbat dinner, and went to synagogue on Saturday. Okay, this is the last of the verses. That was verse 6. By the witnesses of God's righteous servant, Moshe. The second speaker of Isaiah 53 is Isaiah in verses 7 through 10. It is God in verses 11 and 12. Three different speakers. And God was the speaker of uh, Isaiah 52, verses 13 through 14, in quotes. Chapter 7. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth. Like a sheep being led to slaughter, like in you. Dumb before those who shear her. He did not open his mouth. Midrash form. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. This verse can be identified in the book of Ezekiel. And with me. God maltreats him, not man. Maltreatment is a part of being chastised and punished and maltreated. Oh, punished by the words and power of God to be made suitable for his purposes. With God, you're always submissive. You don't have any choice. <laughs> Once his power envelops you, that's it. You know, I have no self-will. He controls my thoughts. You know, I, it's, I still feel like myself. But it's not the way I used to think, and that has to do with heaven. Because in heaven, you won't have a mind. He becomes the information of your mind. Well, he's already doing it with me. I know what you're going to experience in heaven. Now, he's the information of my mind, but it's different with me. Because he knows every moment of my life. You know, he's always sending pictures into my mind while we're talking. He says pictures and words. You know, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah, yeah, constantly. Constantly. Um, you know, you're wide awake. It's like a vision, I guess, except you're wide awake. 
And I've been on many visions. I've, if you counted every vision in the Christian Bible and in the Hebrew Bible, I guarantee you I've had more visions than they. He pretty much taught me all this information. Uh, almost every book had a vision to it. And they're very entertaining. The thing about a vision is it's so real. Until you come out of it, then you instantly know the difference. The real is just difference. And do you know there's a reason God likes to be down here? And it has to do with what I just said. Oh, it's too long. It's too long. We've got too much to do here. You can find it on other videos. See, how God sees, that's explained. Go ask a rabbi how God sees. See what you get. And go watch all the videos or read the book. The book's on the internet. You can go to my YouTube channel and, and read the about. You know, what's this channel about? It's very interesting, but you can also find out how to, to get to where these books are. Okay, it's fire refinement, this maltreatment and everything. It's necessary to break the will of a man and to temper and calm his emotions. Ezekiel said, now he wasn't crushed with disease. He was with disease. He was just seized by God and his spirit. And he said, I went in bitterness and in the fury of my spirit in the hand of God. And you figure things are going to be good for you if you're in the hand of God. But Ezekiel was furious and bitter. You know why? He's in the fire of refinement. He's about to get pinned to the ground and sent to his house, cut off from the land of the living. The chastisement, punishment, maltreatment, crushing, and bruising in God's fire of refinement is to remove this bitterness and furious nature of Ezekiel. The furious nature of Moses and the furious nature of yours truly. <laughs> Just because he makes you so angry so many times, you can't get angry anymore. He just wears your anger out. I can still get angry, but I don't really feel it emotionally anymore. I used to. To remove his bitterness and furious of Ezekiel. It is to make a man meek and humble. Moses was called, we first seen he murders a man in anger. He was called the most humble man on earth at the end of his life. God had him for 40 years. Now, I don't need to be that humble because I'm bringing the wrath and a reckoning and dismissal of the rabbis. Wrath to the Christianity. That's right. Those are my, I got all these names, but my favorite is I bring the reckoning and the wrath of God. Midrash, he did not open his mouth. Commentary, Ezekiel was sent to his house and God bound him with the cords of his power so that he could not go out among the people. To the people, Ezekiel was silent as the lamb. He didn't talk to anybody. Um, same thing with me. I was actually sent to my room. I don't have a house. I live with my elderly parents in their condominium during the 90s. I do a lot of things around here for room and board. And now I got a little Social Security money coming in. Jesus talked. He wasn't silent as a land until his last breath. In one gospel, Jesus is asked, are you going to remain silent? And Jesus talks verse after verse in answer to the question. It is not silent as a lamb. Doesn't fit verse 7. Verse 8. By oppressive judgment, he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living through the sin of my people. I was cut off from the land of the living by God. So that he could turn me into the righteous servant, Oshie, and I could make his people stop sinning. Get them back to sin again. 
give them to Yom Kippur. It's only for past sins. Okay, Midrash. By oppressive judgment, he was taken away. The oppressive judgment is being guilty and receiving a sentence of imprisonment in his home and maltreatment, chastisement, punishment, bruising, and crushing for the sins of the Jewish people, which I just explained, until suitable for God's purpose, which might prosper. That primarily has to do with the building of the second temple, his returning to the third temple. A purpose that includes making the many righteous and clearing the way, as in my capacity as Elijah, uh, to return to this temple. Be instrumental in, in by these teachings, convincing the Jewish people it has to be built. Build it, never defeat it and disperse it again. Don't build it. And I can't believe the rabbis don't teach this, but it doesn't really go with the Messianic era and world exaltation of the Jewish people by the Gentile. Don't build it. The last words of God. When I do come, and he's saying if his messenger Elijah has not cleared the way, there will be utter destruction to the land of Israel. God considers himself his creation, absolute knowledge, and absolute power. His creation is going to cause the utter destruction. Not him. Not in his power. Who can describe his abode? Who was, oh, have I gotten to it? Okay, the judgment against Jesus was not guilty. To wash his hands of the whole religious controversy, Pilate asked the multitude that had gathered what they would have him do with Jesus. Release him or crucify him. The multitude said, crucify him. This is not an impressive judgment. It was not a judgment of being taken away. He was not guilty. Just the crowd wanted to see him crucified. So they killed him. Yeah, there was not a judgment being taken away. It was a sentence of death. He was executed by crucifixion. With a judgment of death, he did not receive long life. That is part of the covenant between God and his righteous servant, Mosier. It was part of Isaiah uh, 53.10. The oppressive judgment is being guilty and receiving a sentence of maltreatment, chastisement, punishment, bruising, and crushing until suitable for God's purpose. I should have already covered. Who could describe his abode? Jesus has a house in one of the Gospels, but it's never described. No one today could describe his abode. And Isaiah 11 says his abode will be honored. Now, I don't know if Jesus' abode ever being on. Never heard of such a thing. And this is from Mark of the New Testament, chapter 3, verse 15. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many and they followed him. All of Israel will be able to describe my abode, the abode of God's righteous servant Moshe, in this day of the Lord, because of social media and phones with cameras. I don't know how we're going to get that abode. He took me from the world, had me quit practicing law in Hawaii and Texas. <laughs> had me terminate my licenses. Said, you're not going to ever practice law again. This is in the second week, 16 years ago. And he had me thinking this wild refinement was going to be over in, in like a year. Well, it's, it's not over. And it's gotten worse the last three years. It's brutal. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. It's brutal. You say you want God to come talk to you, but he's a strong believer in suffering. That's the Jewish people. It refines you, purifies you, makes you stronger. I tell him, 16 years is plenty. I'm fine. Let's go. 
This is him laughing. This is what I got to put up. He uses me to, in last three I have a knowledge that it's him doing it. I don't think I'd be laughing. I'd be sitting out here crying. Midrash, for he was cut off from the land of the living. Being cut off from something means you cannot have it or get to it. A judgment of being taken away and cut off from the land of the living by a man given long life means cut off from society and material things of the world, not death. Jesus was never confined to his abode from everyone that he knew. Now he wasn't silent, on and on, doesn't fit this verse either. Through the sin of my people who deserve the punishment. Ezekiel suffers the punishment of the house of Israel and Judah for 430 days. I'm going through all this suffering for the witnesses. The houses of Judah and Israel suffered their punishment in exile. There was no vicarious uh, serving in, uh, instead of uh, someone else. The vicarious suffering. Ezekiel's punishment corresponded to the punishment of the houses of Israel and Judah. The fire refinement is like being defeated and uprooted and dispersed. <laughs> That's a fair definition, I guess. I asked him, you've heard me using these six words over and over. And one day I asked him, I said, uh, hey, God, <laughs> where's terror, torment, torture, and heinous acts of cruelty? Where's that? Why don't you put that in here? Because that's what it is. He said, that's just too strong. I said, well, it's all true. I Googled them. Torment, torture, pain. Heinous, acts of cruel, cruelty. I did. I said, see, 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 I feel all this. Should have been in here. This is just a part of the refinement of Ezekiel. It would have infuriated the spirit of the priestly man and made him bitter, who spent his life trying to bring the Jewish people to repentance, to be told he is suffering their punishment for their sin. That saying makes you angry. He does it all day long, off and on. Sometimes nonstop. God doesn't sleep. I've learned I can stay up for four straight days. He likes sleep deprivation. It's part of the torture. A spirit that God was calming by infuriating it on purpose over and over again. Verse 9. I say we can stop now. I got to take a break. We got 9, 10, 11, and 12. I don't know what you're doing. I can keep going to this clicks off at 30 minutes. It's 10 after 11. I think I'm hungry. Yeah, this is the righteous servant Moshe giving a conversation with God at 11 10 on Monday. Okay, verse 9. Apparently, I'm going to continue. And his grave was set among the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood. That's verse 9. This verse says, a righteous servant of God was poor, but dies a rich man. The righteous servant of God becomes poor when God cuts him off from the world. Yeah, I was once a lawyer. I know what it's like to have money. I mean, I wasn't rich, rich, but uh, he made me quit practicing. I love the law. And then he is given the many as his portion and receives the multitude as his spoil. And his abode will be honored. He will die a rich man. I need the witnesses to be strong donators. Of the Jewish people in general. Jesus taught that the rich man is almost always a sinner. Being buried with the rich is the same as thing as with the sinner. Making his grave with the wicked. The gospel say Jesus was buried in a tomb purchased by a rich man. But even with his grave set among the rich, he was still among the wicked.